basically this question is about creating a uh, filter, all uh, right? So we want to create uh, basically a solver that's going to act like a filter so that trades are, right, to allow trades when price, uh, I guess basically price meaning the bar, is within the Bollinger Bands, right? So if, if the bar is completely inside the Bollinger Band, then that solver will be used as a filter to uh, allow signals to get through. All right, so let me yeah get the Bollinger on my chart here. Okay, there's the Bollinger, and let's see, I was given some settings here, so 2 and 34. So let's put 34 in there. All right. And yeah, let me adjust some colors here. Okay, there, so I've got the Bollinger Band, and I'm going to make the, I'm going to set the swings, highs, lows, plots a little lighter, so I'm going to tone them back a little bit. There, all right. So we can see those Bollinger Bands pretty clearly. And let's see, I'll, do, I'll keep using, um, oh no, let me switch, I'll switch over to a minute chart here. There we go, all right. Yeah, let me mark a few bars here. Actually, we've got quite a lot. Yeah, so all of these bars, because the high has broken above the band, right, that's gonna, we're gonna use those bars to prevent signals, to block signals, basically. There, all right, so we have a few, yeah, a few marked, and, well, let's see, so on the lower band, <clears throat> yeah, here's a, couple of bars where the wicks broke the lower band. So there's a couple more. All right, so let's get Bloodhound back open. And we're gonna switch over to the logic tab again. All right, uh, let's see, let's make a new logic template for this condition here. So uh, let's see here. A bars inside the Bollinger Band filter. Yeah, let me grab something here. I'm gonna grab this price inflection that I made in the in the previous question. And I'll just use this as basically, like if we take a look at this, right? That one solver just generates a lot of signals here. So we'll just pretend that this is our, our trade signals, right? This is our trade signals here. So we'll use all of these signals um, to test our filter out. Right. Yeah, so we'll take that with a AND node in there, like so. And so when we create our filter, we'll connect the filter into this AND node and get our results. <coughs> okay, so um, to build this filter, you know, what are we doing here? Well, again, we're doing a bunch of comparisons. We're going to be um, comparing you know, the high of the bar to the upper band and the low of the bar to the lower band, All right? So we want to make sure that, let me grab an arrow here. So we want to make sure that the high of the band is below, or I'm sorry, the high of the bar is below the upper band, All right? High is going to be below the upper band. Um, and we want to make sure that the low of the bar is above the lower band. All right, so that's that's what we're looking for here. So let's grab a comparison solver. So let's connect that in. You know, so there's there's a couple ways we could do this. We could put the Bollinger band in as um, <clears throat> input A and then put price in as input B and let's see. Yeah, if we if so yeah, if we if we use the indicator, the Bollinger band if we put that in for input A and then price for input B, uh, we won't have to adjust our outputs any. So, let's do that. So, we're going to slightly do, we're going to do the same thing but just reverse how we phrase it. So, we're going to look for the upper band to be above or greater than the high price, and we're going to look for the lower band to be below the low price. 
So input A, we'll set that to our Bollinger Band. There's our Bollinger. All right, and don't forget to change the settings of your indicator. And um, yeah, so if the upper band will generate a long using the upper band and a short using the lower band. All right, click OK. Now input B, that's going to be price. So for the long, so to generate a long output, we're using the high of the bar. And the short is going to be the opposite, the low of the bar, like so. All right, so if we look at our output, right, basically we can see whenever a bar, all right, breaks the upper band, we're getting a short only output, right? So we're missing the, the long output, right? We're missing that long output, right? Whenever, whenever price breaks above the upper band, and if we go back over here, we can see, yeah, where price broke below. There we go. So if we look at this, so now we're missing the short output, right? So, so we're going to be missing some output whenever price breaks outside the bands. So what we are interested in is when Bloodhound has both a long and a short output at the same time. Right? So that's what we're interested in from this, this solver here. So, so actually, let's, let's name this solver before we go too far. All right, so we're comparing the um, Bollinger Bands to the high and the low price. So, so um, you know, yeah, so how do we, you know, how do we isolate when we have both a long and a short output on the same bar, right? So in other words, basically, how do we get rid of you know, how do we get rid of this output here where there's only either a short or only a long, right? So we need to get rid of the output when there's um, only one output and keep when we have both long and shorts. So the way we can do that is this would be a job for the long and short modifier. So let's add that down here and let's connect that to the result node. All right, and so for the long short modifier, we're going to switch the mode to product, right? Which product means multiplication, right? So if, yeah, so if our mode is doing, you know, multiplication, you know, what happens is, uh, let's grab this, right? So in this area where there used to be just a short only. Here, let's connect that up. All right. So if we look at the two outputs, right, the long output, it equals zero, and the short output equals one. So if you take zero times one equals zero. So that's what the long short modifier is doing, is it's taking the long output value, multiplying it by the short output value. So you get zero times one. All right, so whenever you get zero times anything, well, you get zero. So there you go. So that removes um, the outputs. And same thing over here. All right, so there we go. On these two bars where, right, the low, the low wick had broken the band. And so there's no output on that bar. All right, and so I'm going to change the name for this long short modifier. Just tell me what, what function it's doing, what mode it's in, and it's in product. Okay, so now, so now what we're gonna do is, um, right, so, so remember, th this is our kind of pretend trace signals here. So we can see we are getting uh, some signals here when, when price is broken above the upper band. Yeah, we're getting a couple of uh, short signals here. So now, if we take our, our filter, plug that in, and there we go. So there we go, this, this short signal uh, was removed, and this short signal here was removed as well. 
And let's see what happens here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we had a long signal there. Let's take a look. So yeah, we had a long signal uh, on this up bar here. And our filter, there, our filter removes that long, so that long signal there. Okay, and we can name that AND node to tell us that, yeah, that what's coming out of the AND node are our filtered signals. 